It is a beautiful Christmas morning and I figured I'd talk to you guys about what my life was like before YouTube. Uh, it's something I've never really gone over, uh, starting with high school. I mean, I was kind of the opposite of popular. It's funny because my mother used to actually dress me and my brother the same way until we were like, oh man, maybe like freshmen in high school. Uh, so, you know, I mean, didn't really fit in. Um, parents were very like strict and rigid, no real guidance outside of studying and doing homework every day. Uh, one big thing that stuck out was uh, we weren't allowed to play video games during the week. And in high school and even early on in college, I was like obsessed with playing video games. I'm sure this had to do with me being restricted as a child and that resulted in me pretty much signing up for a community college uh, at the last minute straight outside of high school because I didn't have any focus, I didn't know what I was doing and that translated to community college itself. Uh, so I was failing in and out for three or four years. Maybe I accumulated like 25 or 30 credits, but I was literally playing video games like 10, 12 hours a day until like three, four, five in the morning. You know, I was too tired to go to class the next day. Uh, and my parents were actually home, so I would actually go to McDonald's or something, like hang out for a couple hours uh, to pretend that I went to class until my parents left for work. At the time, my brother was away at school. Uh, unlike me, he was actually valedictorian. You know, he followed down the path of what my parents had been really just beating into us. Uh, that if you study and you go to school, you're gonna get a good job and be successful. But even then, all our parents really did was and, and nothing against them, but you know they were kind of stressed out with their past life situations with my mentally disabled sister uh, who is still at home. Uh, so my parents were under an incredible amount of stress and didn't really have you know the opportunity or the guidance themselves uh, to know what to do. Uh, so my brother was doing his own thing. I was at home in and out of community college looking for crappy jobs. I mean, my father worked a government job and my mother uh, you know, was very sick uh, for a period of time in her life and she had to give up her good job down in Manhattan. So didn't exactly have any connections anywhere through anyone to get any job whatsoever. Through most of this period of time in early high school, through early college, I was lifting weights. So, you know, despite not being popular, despite, you know, wasting most of my time playing video games, I still had some element of health and I was in a way working on something that would help me in the future. You know, I was spending an hour or two a day in the gym. I was, you know, bulking up, eating a lot of food consistently. So my first job was actually door to door sales for this pyramid scheme selling windows and roofing. And they weren't actually paying me per hour. So I would, you know, be walking around, you know, seven, eight, nine, ten hours a day, just knocking on doors, asking people if they needed new windows or roofing. And it was 100% commission based. So I would go days without a paycheck. I mean, I only lasted a week there. I remember the last day it was like absolutely pouring soaking rain. And one of my buddies did this like thing where he would get like soaking wet without an umbrella. So people would feel bad for him and, uh, and try to get more sales. And then I remember the last day as well, I drove my 2000 Volvo over this curb and it completely cracked the engine mount because I was deprived of sleep. Uh, just overall horrible experience. Uh, my buddy from high school actually got me a job working in a movie theater as like a cashier, just uh, part-time minimum wage. But back to my video game addiction, I was still playing, you know, until 2, 3, 4 a.m. And correspondingly, I would show up late to work. Uh, I think I was at that job for a few months until I lost the job. And I mean, you know, my parents restricting me when I was younger and not teaching me that you know video games aren't important they're just a side thing you know it's one thing if you want to you know spend a few hours a day doing them but you have to understand that the main focus in your life is xyz i never had someone to tell me that and i never realized that uh, until my early 20s you know i was playing world of warcraft in high school uh all day i was after that i was playing league of legends in college all day and my one biggest regret in general, profession-wise, is not capitalizing on how good I was at these video games at the time. You know, playing 12, 15 hours a day, I could have started, you know, live streaming on Twitch, doing stuff like that, uh, but that's a whole different story. Uh, and then I saw an advertisement for a staffing company, 
that was hiring waiters. Uh, and this is still in those early years of college, uh, like early 2010s, uh, still no guidance, still dropping in and out. I uh, went on an interview for this uh, catering job for wait staff and I was hired. Uh, I don't really remember bullshitting on the interview. I think the guy was just really desperate to get anyone to work. And I was making, you know, $20, $22 an hour uh, for a couple nights of work a week. Uh, so I was able to save up some money and I had a little bit of extra spending cash for my bodybuilding food for that type of stuff. Uh, I think at the time I was on the bodybuilding diet, uh, just a lot of chicken, rice, broccoli, sweet potatoes, really classic conventional stuff. So now I'm working at this catering company one or two nights a week, uh, still living with my parents in and out of community college. Uh, if I was a community college, I was only going a couple days a week and living at my parents, they were always like really negative people, never really supportive, always like, oh, what are you doing with your life? How's college going? It's just never supportive. So uh, these events at this catering company were at a different place every week, uh, which was a nice change of pace. Uh, one of them was at Trump National Golf Club uh, before Trump was president. And I was speaking to the manager, asking if he needed bartenders, uh, not really expecting a call, but these people started calling me uh, to work at Trump Golf Club separately from the catering company uh, for a few days per week. And I learned the basics of bartending there, really just like dive bar stuff, really basic bartending, vodka sodas, some classic cocktails. And this golf club was seasonal, uh, so I was still looking for other jobs at the time. I was still in and out of uh, school. And I started watching uh, Anthony Bourdain's No Reservations, uh, some like cooking documentaries, and I realized that if I was gonna work in hospitality, I might as well try to get a job in Manhattan. Before I started working in Manhattan, I landed a personal training job in a gym, and I was also working as a private trainer on the side. I wasn't certified at the time. Uh, now I have NASM, uh, but the gym job was terrible, and I should have tried to find another job or some more clients uh, because I was only making like a few hundred dollars per week, you know, training people, cooking, and not really being able to expand. Uh, so that only worked out for, you know, a few months as well, the private training job. And I was in and out of that commercial gym as a personal trainer for several years, but pretty much made minimum wage the whole time. Because even when I was training clients, you know, they were only paying me like $12 an hour, which was ridiculous. So through that private training client, I actually ended up catering a few parties as a private chef. You know, I was prepping meals for him. He really liked my cooking. Uh, all of that chef experience was self-taught. Uh, in 2013, 2014, I wasn't playing video games as much. I was actually obsessively watching YouTube videos on food, how to cook, you know, practicing in the kitchen, uh, everything really being self-taught. And uh, after catering those few parties, uh, you know, kind of stopping my gym job, I ended up getting a job in a restaurant just north of my parents' house, which was outside of Manhattan. And that was definitely a step up from the golf club. You know, I learned a lot more about food, learned a lot more about bartending, uh, took my like hospitality knowledge a step up. But you know, that job wasn't really making too much money either, was killing myself and only lasted a few months there. Uh, so I started looking for jobs in Manhattan. And you know, those guys that worked in that restaurant north of the city, uh, they were from Manhattan, so some of that experience and knowledge did translate over. Uh, after going on like dozens and dozens of interviews, I lucked out, ended up getting a bartending job at this place called DBGB Kitchen and Bar, uh, which was Danielle Belloud, uh, who's a famous French chef, uh, his restaurant that was downtown. It's actually closed now, closed uh, a few years ago. Uh, but it was it was decent. Uh, I had no clue what I was doing. You know, thankfully they taught me the basics, and I learned that I had this really obnoxious uh, behavior uh, that was probably from my mother, where I would interrupt people and finish their sentences and not uh, let people speak. Uh, so they ended up firing me there because no one really liked me. Uh, but I learned a few lessons, learned how to bartend in Manhattan in some capacity, and. Over the course of those next few years, literally from like 2015 until now, you know, I've been working in New York City restaurants, been personal training people, 
uh, only recently uh, has YouTube been a thing. Uh, so by this time, it's about 2015, and I had saved up enough money at these bartending jobs for my jaw surgery, and this was a goal I had in mind. You know, I was unhappy with my appearance. I could tell something was wrong. So uh, in, in my mind, I had a couple goals. Uh, to fix my teeth, get some jaw surgery. Uh, while I was working in these bartending jobs, a lot of people always asked me if I was an actor, so I figured, all right, Let's get my teeth fixed. Let's see if acting is something I'm interested in. And uh, somewhere in this blurb, I went back to college uh, at Hunter College in the city, but that was really horrible because my commute was like two hours each way and, and that didn't last long. But my parents were still beating me to death with the, you know, the go to school, get your degree, you'll get a job and everything will come together magically. I've worked in so many different bars and restaurants, I honestly couldn't tell you them all. I do remember one was this uh, steakhouse around the time I was at Hunter College, and I actually didn't take my finals at Hunter College because uh, I was trying to get this steakhouse job and make some money. And the first week of training lined up with the final, so what are you gonna do? Uh, so over the course of the next year or two, I think, uh, what happened? I wasn't working because I was recovering from jaw surgery actually. Uh, so I had jaw surgery and oh no, that was when I was at Del Frisco's. It, it's, it's honestly, it's all a blur to me guys. So before I had that jaw surgery, I was working at a steakhouse, Del Frisco's. That's where I saved up the rest of my money. Um, that would have been a really great job if I, if I stuck with it. But you know, I was really stressed out there. I just decided to, to stop it and get the jaw surgery. Uh, then for most of 2016, even early 2017, I was recovering from that jaw surgery. Uh, I'm trying to remember what job, no. So then after I recovered from the jaw surgery, that was when I went back to Hunter College. And then I started working in another steakhouse. That went okay. And then I got another job at a cocktail bar. Uh, which was where I started working in more of a bar managerial position. You know, I was head bartender there. Uh, I was kind of organizing and in charge of most of the stuff. Uh, but, you know, they weren't paying a lot of money. They weren't doing so well. Uh, so I actually ended up working for Salt Bay, uh, New Surrette Steakhouse in Manhattan. That was at the end of 2017. And that was also when I was auditioning for MasterChef. So I passed up on that new Surrette Steakhouse job, which might have been really lucrative, uh, but I ended up not getting on MasterChef, ended up not having a job when I came back, and that's when I started having uh, a lot of really bad sleeping issues and health issues from uh, that trip out to LA, and uh, I didn't look for a job for months because I wasn't really sleeping. And that's when my YouTube channel uh, started kind of growing, I think. I think, was it? You yeah, know, that's when my YouTube channel um, started growing in some capacity. You know, I was doing videos more consistently. I was around a few thousand subscribers. Um, where did the YouTube channel start? The YouTube channel started in 2016, but my memory is so bad, guys. I honestly don't even remember um, making YouTube videos when I was at like that steakhouse and stuff and doing all these things in college. I didn't even really talk about my personal life on my YouTube channel at the time. Uh, and the carnivore diet was a blur too, you know. The carnivore diet I started, you know, pretty much at the beginning of all of this, uh, after I took Accutane. But, like, I wish my memory was better because then this story would be uh, a bit more uh, chronological. Accutane must have been uh, early on in college and then the carnivore diet started uh, the carnivore diet started when I had my first uh, job at that Trump golf club but uh, point is I've kind of been following a really consistent carnivore diet for uh, about six years so nothing really deviated or changed about it you know I've been buying steaks from the same place liver salmon were from the same place only in the last year or so has my diet changed somewhat in the raw dairy and stuff so uh, back to more currently uh, I left my job around May of this year. Um, so the salt, so just to clarify the time range, Master Chef was early 2018. 
Um, and most of 2018, I was just working hard on my YouTube channel, pumping out videos. And early 2019 is where I had a really big jump in subscribers. That being said, I still uh, was looking for bartending jobs and personal training jobs. You know, even earlier this year when I had like 40, 50,000 YouTube subscribers. So earlier this year was the last time I've worked a bartending job and I kind of made a few mistakes, you know. I didn't get interviewed there early enough. It's, it's pretty much like the hottest cocktail bar in Manhattan right now. Um, it's called, well the restaurant was called Feroce and I can't remember what the rooftop bar was called, but it's in the Moxie Hotel in Nomad and it was like, all celebrities are going there, like the Victoria's Secret models were having their parties there. Uh, so I might have had a bit of fun at that bartending job if I had, you know, better connections and was able to stay in there. But, uh, you know, the YouTube channel, I started making some money on ad revenue. You know, I started the Frankie's Naturals, the hygiene and cosmetic products, and I was making about as much as I was working these crappy bartending jobs. I mean, I would still bartend right now if I could get a decent job because, you know, you make decent money on the weekend nights and, um, you know, it would have been nice. Um, I declined a personal training job earlier this year too because it just wasn't enough money. Uh, but now with YouTube, with the Me Company, uh, you know, you guys have seen what's happened over the past year or so. Uh, so I won't cover that too much. But you know, things are going a lot better. And I know the story has been all over the place, and I, I probably missed way too many details about things. Uh, but this is just to give you guys an idea of, <laughs> like how much I've struggled, like I've never really made a considerable amount of money. Um, and, and you know, my persistence and, and my struggle throughout most of my adult life, you know, having very little to no guidance has been a reason that I kind of act like I do. Um, you know, everything I've done has been on my own from, you know, my bartending jobs to my personal training jobs um, you know, no connections, no guidance, and I'm very thankful for the internet. Otherwise, I definitely wouldn't be here right now. Uh, so, like, my ability to take direction, be dynamic, you know, learn things quickly uh, is why I feel like I'm able to excel at so many things. And, you know, dealing with the rejection and uh, stress of so many of these jobs uh, has made it... I guess easier for me to to work with the YouTube channel and do this stuff every day uh, but it's you know given me a harsh sense of reality and how difficult life can be uh, so I don't take anything for granted and it's why when I see all of these special interest shills these people you know coming into you know what I've been doing and what I've worked very hard for um, you know I'm, I'm just I'm willing to go back to what I was doing if it means, you know, making sure these people don't take advantage of someone like myself. Uh, you know, I've seen horrible things happen to my family members, horrible things happen to other people uh, as a result of one thing, degenerate scumbag people trying to make money and only caring for themselves. So uh, by, by being a better person myself and helping other people and, and having integrity, uh, I'm hoping to, you know, be one of the, I guess, more positive people on this planet in a sense that I'm helping people as opposed to being a parasite as opposed to you know draining the system so uh, I guess uh, we'll wrap this up here uh, because I am pretty cold my hands are getting numb and I thought it was a little warmer outside today with the Sun but I uh, guess not uh, so thank you guys for joining me uh, as always just like the video subscribe if you haven't uh, share the video if you'd like to uh, you can check out all the links in the description below but you guys enjoy your Christmas day.